God damn it. The comment section on this one is gonna be hell. Do your worst, you filthy animals. <clears throat> now before we begin today's video, let's clear some things up. We know exactly what you're thinking. And Among Us SCP, this sounds ridiculous. Why would the Foundation ever have to deal with an anomaly relating to Among Us, of all things? Is this some kind of sick joke dreamt up by our YouTube commenters? And look, we get it. It's definitely one of the more ridiculous anomalies the Foundation has had to contain, at least at face value. But there are a few things you should take into consideration before things get too Among Us pilled around here. Oh god. First, this is hardly the strangest anomaly we've covered on SCP Explained. SCP-5981, also known as Nuke City, revolved around a mysterious broadcast of a Family Guy episode. SCP-4335, a welt in the Crucible, had to deal with an entity occupying space inside the video game Minecraft. But there are countless other examples of anomalies creeping into popular culture mutating it, and twisting it for their own purposes. What may seem silly on paper, such as the Foundation having to do research on a popular video game like Among Us, is all part of what the organization does. If the brave researchers at the SCP Foundation chuckled and brushed off a potential threat just because it had to do with something like Among Us, the entire population might be susceptible to a supernatural event of unprecedented proportions. The Foundation's entire veil of secrecy could crumble, all because someone shrugged off the possibility of allocating resources to deal with the threat millions of civilians could discover. These games, movies, and shows are all immensely popular, and an anomaly affecting a global phenomenon like Among Us could spell doom for not only the Foundation, but the entire world as well, if left unchecked. So if you don't want to risk termination, Please try to keep a straight face as we divulge into the weird and wacky story of SCP-5167, an anomaly codenamed in the Foundation's database as <sighs> When the Imposter is Sus. Oh god, I hate my job sometimes. To begin, we need to go back. Way, way back. Centuries before Among Us was even conceived as a concept, before video games had been invented, and even before electricity itself was discovered. Back to an era where the gods of Olympus ruled supreme, and stone marble statues lined buildings that would serve as timeless feats of architecture, and where a new school of thought was developing, one that focused on logic and reason, instead of superstition and hearsay. That's right. We're talking about ancient Greece, a society that, for all of its achievements and progression in the fields of education, cultures, and logic, was still largely governed by religion and mythology. But of course, as you may come to expect when dealing with the SCP Foundation, there's always a little truth in that which we cannot understand. While those who are unaware of the paranormal might deride the Greeks for being overly focused on a pantheon of gods they logically should have no reason to believe, those who know that anything can happen in the world of the anomalous may approach this topic, and the subject of religion in general, in a different light. The Greek gods were very real. While the myths may not be entirely true, and they may not have been literal gods, there were a group of anomalous entities who influenced Greek society, performing miraculous feats that left those who observed them in complete wonder and putting together cults of worship surrounding them. While most of this was done in secret, word of these beings traveled incredibly fast in the ancient world, and they were heralded as gods, beings of divine might that could do anything in the universe, who existed above the mortal plane and demanded worship from their followers. A glance at Greek mythology paints a picture of a group of gods who acted more or less like humans. They fought, they killed, they argued, and they felt human emotions. It's likely that this characterization and the stories emerged from how these entities conducted themselves in actuality. There were dozens upon dozens of entities the Greeks worshipped as divinity, and while the stories portrayed the gods as jealous, vengeful beings who constantly fought with each other, it doesn't compare to the reality of the situation, which was much more cutthroat. You see, there were 12 gods of Olympus, and you probably know most of them. They're remembered today for a reason. Zeus, Athena, Poseidon, 
Ares, the list goes on. We still remember these beings because of the iconic stories they took part in and how significant they were in ancient times. While for every Zeus god of lightning, there were five more gods who absolutely no one but the most hardcore historical fanatic remember. Gods of niche <laughs> subjects, who had small followings, who never had those character-defining myths to flesh them out and preserve them for all of history to remember. Who would, when Greece fell, fade into obscurity. For every Zeus, there was a Pythonius. Who was Pythonius, you ask? Well, if the guy heard you asking that question, he'd probably smite you down before the question even left your lips. If he wasn't engaged in a hardcore game of Among Us, that is. Don't worry, we'll get there. All will be explained. It's the name of the channel, after all. Pythonius was a god of jealousy and envy, mainly in a romantic context. Do you have a crush on someone who's already taken? Pythonius knows all about that. Do you wish you weren't trapped in a dead-end relationship with someone who doesn't love you? Thonius understands your plight. But Thonius wasn't just a reverse bizarro cupid. He was a literal personification of the emotions of jealousy and envy themselves. No matter the context, if it was petty and greedy, Thonius knew it all too well. You would think that this would make Thonius a prime candidate for some mythological drama, right? After all, the Greek gods loved their infighting, and who better to stir up some Hera said, Zeus said arguments than a literal god of envy? Well, it didn't quite work out that way for Thonius. His appearances in myths were infrequent, and today he is nearly all but forgotten, reduced to a mere three sentences on a Wikipedia page while other figures from his era have taken on an entirely new life in the modern day as cultural icons like Perseus or Hercules. But no, poor Thonius, whose penchant for jealousy and envy backfired on him and catapulted him into obscurity. Why did this happen? It's kind of obvious when you think about it. While other gods granted their worshippers a good harvest or copious amounts of wine and partying, all Thonius had to offer was, well, the ugly side of humanity. His worshippers were far and few between. After all, no one wanted their entire life to revolve around the jealousy of others, and Thonius, being a personification of envy, had an understandably difficult time getting people to devote themselves to him. Thonius was greedy and envied the other gods, so while he would accept nothing but absolute worship from his followers, he couldn't offer much else especially not when compared to the bountiful boons a great god like Zeus or Hera could offer. And so Thonius festered, an ugly god who wallowed in self-hatred and irrelevancy, constantly living in the shadow of the pantheon that gave him purpose. And his purpose was to remain jealous, to remain envious of those who had what he did not, a god unfit to be worshipped, whose purpose was to embody the feelings of wanting what isn't yours. Thonius is both tragic and poetic, and when the Greeks faded away, so too did Thonius. The Roman Empire, who largely adapted Greece's pantheon of gods for their own stories, left no record of bringing Thonius into the mix. For centuries, he was a god without a home, attempting to find a place in a changing world. Thonius was angry, jealous, envious, and tired. The forces of the universe would call him forth in every new era, thrusting him back into the world and forcing him to search for the sustenance beings that were referred to as gods fed off of, devotion. But every time Thonius would find himself walking the earth once again, he would instead discover that there was no place for him. Mankind was moving on. There was less and less room for gods with every passing year. All the popular ones had established themselves as everlasting religious figures at this point, and they would never fade away. Some took pleasure in living among humans, rising to power as people of influence and fame. Others who could not find a place in the world would fade away, never to be revived or worshipped ever again. Forgotten dead gods who the world long outgrew. But Thonius's jealous spirit would never allow him to consign himself to that fate. He hated who he was and what he stood for, but that nature brought him back so many times before. It was his jealousy of the other gods who were somehow managing to linger beyond their Greek heyday that caused him to persevere. He needed a purpose, one last chance to be remembered. He had struggled for centuries, 
and this was his last ditch effort to be remembered. Wherever he would wake up in the modern era, Thonius would have to make the most out of it. And this is where Among Us comes in. In late 2020, the SCP Foundation was just as captivated as anyone else by the Among Us phenomenon, a game that was sweeping the globe, where players took on the roles of crewmates on a spaceship, one of which was an imposter, whose job was to secretly murder the other players. While they were busy doing tasks that ranged from scanning themselves in the medbay or scanning key cards in the admin room, the imposter would be lurking behind every corner, sometimes in the ship's air vents, waiting for the proper moment to strike. If a dead body was found, a player could report it, and the players would then discuss which one of them they suspected to be the imposter. The game's addictive psychological elements and accessible rules made it a smash hit, but for the Foundation, they were infatuated with it for entirely different reasons. You see, when a piece of media attains the level of fame that Among Us did, the Foundation has to make sure to keep their eyes on it. Popular media is a prime target for anomalies. The population's collective attention on it just seems to invite the forces of the supernatural world to warp and distort what we know to be familiar. And this is exactly what was happening to Among Us. For months, the Foundation was documenting cases of an entity who appeared in games of Among Us and caused havoc in the real world. These cases and their after effects were so severe that the Foundation deemed the anomaly significant enough to get its own file in the database, designating it under the name SCP-5167. SCP-5167 would join games of Among Us like any other player. They would blend in, much like the imposter in the game, and play just as anyone else would. It was what happened after a player participated in a session with SCP-5167 that had the Foundation investigating every aspect of the game. Those who played with SCP-5167 would find themselves stricken by a severe case of paranoia and capgrass delusion, a psychological condition in which a victim would come to believe those around them had been replaced with identical imposters. The severity of this disorder varied between individuals, but some believed the delusions to such an extent that they lashed out at those they believed to be imposters, sometimes resulting in a homicide. Naturally, the Foundation put two and two together, which led back to Among Us. After several months of police cases relating to completely average individuals suddenly striking out at their loved ones, sometimes killing them, and showing signs of capgrass delusion, the organization knew that something was happening on an anomalous scale. At first, it was difficult to make the connection to Among Us, but the Foundation eventually learned from interviews with victims and an examination of their habits over the past few weeks, they had all played the game. And through analysis of the Among Us community's various trends and habits, the Foundation discovered SCP-5167, an entity that was slowly gaining notoriety within the game's community as an almost mythological figure. SCP-5167's tendency to spout long wordy rants at other players during the game's emergency meeting sessions positioned them as an inside joke for those who encountered them. Needing to establish a link between these anomalously induced bouts of paranoia, the Foundation set up a group of web crawler AIs to track Among Us game sessions until SCP-5167 would appear. It was a long shot, but it was one of the many different theories on why these victims were undergoing this level of psychosis, and if it proved to be true, then the Foundation would have a solid idea of what to do next. After weeks of nothing, SCP-5167 was spotted in a game, and the Foundation acted quickly to track down the other players who played alongside the entity. Naturally, they exhibited signs of paranoia and delusion, some of them only for weeks and others for months. That was enough evidence for the Foundation, who would later document several other occurrences of games with SCP-5167 resulting in these psychiatric conditions in other players. The Foundation did what they do best, and established a series of special containment procedures that would wipe SCP-5167 from the internet as best they could. Web crawlers were trained to take down any mentions of the entity, and if a potential sighting was discovered, the Foundation would investigate any and all players involved in the incident. Anyone affected by SCP-5167 would be held under the guise of receiving medical treatment for mental health issues, and they would be amnesticized completely. You might be thinking that the aftereffects of SCP-5167 are relatively tame, 
compared to what the Foundation usually deals with. But look at it this way. Among Us is a game played by millions of people. If SCP-5167 affected only a fraction of that population, it would spell total chaos for the Foundation. Not only that, but the amount of bloodshed the entity would cause would be nothing to scoff at, as a large amount of cases dealt with victims outright murdering anyone they suspected to be an imposter. Attempting to track down the SCP-5167 entity were met with failure. All points of internet access that the Foundation was able to get their hands on only led to a series of abandoned home addresses in rural Greece. But over time, things started to change. The Foundation began to place less of a concern on SCP-5167. It was almost as if the entity was being forgotten. Why? This letter, addressed to the SCP-5167 research team from the site's director, might clear some things up. As requested by head researcher Abrams, I've had the Site-22 analyst look into the progress of SCP-5167's anomalous effects over the period we've observed it, and the results are much as I expected. When we first discovered SCP-5167, for the sake of argument, let's say this is when SCP-5167 first came into existence, the impact it had on its victims was severe. I don't think I have to remind you of what Billy Heath did to his family's faces. But since then, almost immediately, really, since that first couple of manifestations, the potency of its effects have started to decline. Full detachment from reality became delusion, and delusion has now become paranoia and the intensity of that paranoia is lessening in each new case. This is all conjecture, of course, and shouldn't be taken as gospel, but based on what we've observed of this anomaly thus far, our estimation is that SCP-5167's anomalous effects will become inert by the end of the year. Whether it'll keep popping up in these video game matches is another story, though. It was just as the director had explained. SCP-5167's cases were becoming less severe. They were almost becoming irrelevant, so much so that the Foundation hypothesized that the anomaly's declining potency would lead to its neutralization before long, an entity fading into irrelevance and obscurity once more. If you haven't figured out yet, maybe SCP-5167's username will spell it out for you. When the entity joined games of Among Us, it made sure that everyone knew who it was. Well, everyone would know who it was if the entity had managed to maintain any form of popularity over the past dozen centuries or so. That's right, SCP-5167 would join under the name Thonius. The god's new life had thrust it into the modern day, except this time it was inside the game of Among Us, where it was forced to cope with the reality that the world seemed to be more obsessed with a trendy game than any god or mythological figure. While inside the game, Thonius was one bitter individual. During emergency meetings, instead of trying to figure out if Red was sus or not, the god would just yell at the players around him. One player asked Thonius what they were doing while the rest of the crew was performing their tasks, to which Thonius poetically responded, Where was I? I was there when the mountains were newborn and the oceans virginal. I was there when gods walked among men and their wisdom was cast down like sunlight. I was there when mankind was capable of legends. And now, I find myself in a world that has forgotten even the taste of life, even the very concept of life beyond existing from one day to the next. Mere continuance. Where all the world is wasted away in idle play of emotions that once rang true, I am in the world where even the gods are forgotten, their bones washed away by time. A world where man has moved on, where all the legacy I have left are our three sentences on Wikipedia. I thought my time had come again. I thought this could be the new me. But this is nothing. Let me stay dead this time. I'm tired. To which the other players responded in typical Among Us fashion that Thonius was sus. He was promptly voted as the imposter and ejected from the airlock. And so the tragic tale of Thonius came to a close. A tired, obscure god who never had a place in the world. His presence in Among Us grew less and less as the game's popularity waned, and once again he would fade into obscurity. But the nature of Thonius meant that he would, in some form, return again one day. Where or how, no one could say. But as long as there was a situation to reap envy from, a trend to be jealous of, Thonius would remain eternally doomed to suffer the fate of being nobody's favorite god. And frankly, 
We can't imagine this video will change that. Now go check out SCP Minecraft World Destroyer, SCP-4335, A Welt in the Crucible, and SCP-5254, Gotta Catch Em All, for more of the most absurd anomalies out there.